Swear it's been 700 degrees in here since you came in. Hello, Jack, and welcome back to my channel. I've got some questions on home networking, and one particular viewer sent me in a network diagram, and obviously, lots and lots of questions. And I thought probably easier to me to put the network diagram up in front of me here, so this will be displayed up here for you guys. Um, and why that's up there will we'll explain about what his network is. Now cable lengths, a lot of questions are coming up with cable lengths between the um, socket on the wall where the user sits right up to uh, the switch itself. So that's got to be no more than say 80 meters maximum including the patch panel. So you've got to, you've got to calculate for wall port to patch panel, patch panel um, to the switch using what you call a patch lead actually can be depend on how so a lot of people tend to put if it's a small business your patch panel will be in the same rack as your switches so the, the patch lead doesn't need to be any more than 0.5 meters one meter maximum basically um, so you're in plenty of range so if you lay 80 meters cable from the user to the pat to rack the, to the rack itself then obviously you've got plenty of option um, about going over the top anyway itself. So most small businesses, most small offices, um, wall, wall, wall port to rack is always um, within 80 meters easily or or under. Depends how big your office is. If the, if the office, one side of the office to the other side of the office, if that's more than 100 meters, then what you want to do is stationary your patch panel in the middle of the office. So find uh, like a small room, uh, could be a cupboard, could be sort of like you know a storage area that you want to put into. If you if you only got if you only gonna have like 20 users in the building, then you don't need a massive rack. Something oh, you can have wall-mounted rack like a I know a 9U, 10U, or 12U rack. And it can be up on the wall, out the way, so that you can still use it as a storage area. Stick that in the central of your office, or find something locally central in your office. Uh, even if it's an office itself, you can have that amount up on the wall. Doesn't need to be massive um, uh, storage, as I said before. Then, then, then all the offices around where it's located will always be in the length, unless you've got some big, super big office, which is then each room's got moles of length in between. So obviously that's not the case. Most common cases are on offices, um, the patch pan is always stationary, central to all the offices around there, so the cable will fit. So you don't need to do um, wall socket to a switch, from a switch to another switch, and a switch down to the user. You don't need it. The more switches you put in, in place, more complicated, because it has to accumulate between, between two switches. The only reason why you'll have two switches uh, is between two buildings that are quite that are more than 80 meters apart from each other so you'll cable up to one switch then you'll put an 80 meter between the two switches to the other office and then you'll cable from that switch down to all the offices in that way that's any time you'll use a two switch scenario or another way you'd use a switch if you run out of wall, uh, run out of sockets in a particular room and you haven't got the funding or the time to actually put in place extra um, structured cabling, then you'll just put a switch in there, pull one port off, and make that into several multiple ports. So there's no way you can do it. Or the other way, uh, I've also snared it in the business center, for instance. Uh, you put enough wall sockets around the, the room, then you find out the actual clients or tenants tends to put the um, desks in the middle of the room, which means you have to start laying cables out desk so the best scenario is to do is mount a switch on the back of this on one of the desks for your uh, data patch another one on the back put two put two on there one for your uh, data network one for your IP network for your phones that's if you'd use an IP phones if not it's a different scenario then you'll take one lead from the wall socket run it under the carpet if you can up to that middle desk then you can then branch off from that middle desk to all the other desks that's another scenario you can actually use itself but this particular diagram we're looking at, maybe we've got PC1, PC2, and PC3, then you've got a GS105 switch, then he's got cable lengths, minimum of 10 meters and 5 meters between each other and stuff. That's good. But then you've got this second scenario at the bottom here, which is then you've got a GS, uh, GS0108, which is obviously another switch, connected to the internet, then you've got PCs 6, 5, and 4, with a, no more than a big, big cable length of 12 meters. So in this scenario, you wouldn't need two switches. You'll just have one patch panel, one switch, enough ports on there for all your users. You'll patch all your PCs from that office location back to one patch panel and have one switch in there. 
by having that scenario you won't make the network any faster or any quicker because you've got two switches communicating with each other the quick the best way is when you got pcs on a single switch they only have to communicate on the same switch um, and so you, you basically got really fast quick access then if you've got pcs on another switch um, communicating with these pcs on the first switch then you've got to go through a, an uplink cable that depends how far that is to the other switch to deal with it basically deal with the traffic so it's easier to have them all on one switch to make things e easier. So as long as the office scenario you've got here in particular is no more than, I mean it actually shows here that roughly between the two switch links is no more than 12 meters. So in theory the PC is not that far away. I will cable every PC back to one patch panel and then one switch from there to make things quicker, faster and much more easier. Having two switches in play can be complicated. There's another expense on a second switch where in theory you could have bought, spent the money on the two switches you bought and bought a real decent switch. If you want fast speed on the network, make sure you that install Cat6 cabling. It's got more twisted pairs inside, less crosstalk on the cable. So that's the cables go. Buy yourself a really decent switch, maybe a £500 switch um, on there, that's been massively expensive. Then that'll give you a gigabit network itself, which is normally the standard for office environments. But if you're using large files, then you may have to look for a, gigabit, a 10 gigabit switch, which then you'll need to put in 10 gigabit fiber. So then you'll lay fiber between, uh, um, between the PCs if you want to go that route. Or you can get 10 gigabit ethernet as well. So you'll need to get 10 gigabit ethernet switch to start with, then again, cap six cabling between all the PCs, and then get another, again, faster network as well. And if you want to go super fast, and you've got loads of money to spend, and distances won't be a problem with it, you fiber from the switch all the way back to the desk. So you can have fiber ports put on the wall that goes back to a fiber patch panel. Then the patch panel goes off of that to an actual fiber switch. So it's fiber all the way from the desk point right to the user. Then that way you won't have to worry about distances. But again, Buying the fiber cable is a cheap part. The most expensive part is actually terminating the ends. You need to get a special machine in or somebody that's specialized in doing what you call doing the patching. He can be expensive. He can be up to a thousand pounds per day doing fiber. Um, so if you can get somebody on the cheap, that's cheaper than that, then obviously fiber all the way if you can do it. The end parts of the fiber tends to be expensive. Having a fiber switch, prices go up because obviously it's a lot more expensive running fiber. But to keep things really simple, Again, as long as the distance between uh, one room to the other is no, no more than 80 meters in distance, centralize your patch panel so it's in the middle of the office. So every room from the patch panel is no more than 80 meters in length. Stick to that. Keep it simple, keep it easy. One switch to deal with with all your users on it, nice and easy. So that's that's my, my advice and that's how I always cable. I only use two switches if I'm actually overloaded on the first switch then I'll buy a second switch or I may upgrade that to a bigger switch with ports on it. Um, if I go for two switches, it may be because I'm doing two offices that are more than 80 meters apart and I put fiber between them. Uh, or another scenario is if I'm at a business center, then I'll put multi I will put extra switches on each desk. So if each desk is holding about 12, 13 people uh, on that complete desk, depending on how big your desks are, then I'll put a switch on that, then just take it straight to a wall port into a patch panel. Um, to make it sort of more easier to rather than install I mean if you've got a large room that can hold say 40 people or maybe maybe 70 people or longer when you got all that patching going around the room if the desk's not up against the, the room the wall itself um, you can't hide the cabling it makes the cabling really untidy and, and basically a bit comes with it sort of a health safety risk basically so it's nicer when you've got the, the tables up against the wall but a lot of clients I've had in the past tenants always like their desks in the middle which is boring if you've got a raised floor then yeah, yeah you can get the patch panels under the flooring to the desks but if you haven't got a raised floor and, and uh, you have to lay all this cable across the floor it becomes nasty and horrible and um, cables can break and snap and you know it's a trip hazard it's not, it's not really a good way of doing it so if you my principle if you go into a room and you look for first time cabling check um, put ducting around the room uh, find out what the, how the layout is going to be of the office from the office person themselves, say how you're going to have the layout of the office, find a way the desk is going to be situated, then you know exactly where you can lay your ports down, what type of trunking to get on the wall and things like that as well. And try to uh, tell customers, don't put your desk in the middle, it's a cabling nightmare. Keep it to one side near the wall so you can cable from
from it's all hidden away nicely as well because a lot of the office desks you've got trunking in the office desk as well so you can put it all in the office desk and when you look around it looks like there's no cable on the floor if you do a job well as well so hopefully this will help you out guys hopefully this has answered your questions about girl uh, well as well from the uh, the guy who emailed me so um so yeah so any questions comment below send me an email and speak to you soon Cheers. I could swear that this room has been running out of air And now it's starting to spin You make me feel kind of bad kind